Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Good evening to every one of you. Once again, I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, as we gather here in this holy place on the first Sunday, may the Lord be with us and bless us all through this month. Especially, we have entered into another blessed month in which we will be observing Passion Sunday, Palm Sunday, and the Holy Week, Good Friday, and Easter. So this month is an important in the Christian calendar, and our forefathers wanted us to grow in our spiritual life by participating in these special services and special programs. May the Lord be with us and bless this all, bless all the activities of this month, whether it be personal or our family or related to our church. <clears throat> Today we have a beautiful passage. Mark chapter 7, verse 24 to 30. <clears throat> The same passage or the same event is given in Matthew chapter 15 verses 21 to 31 <clears throat> where we see a Gentile woman, that is a non-Jewish woman approach Jesus Christ and received a miracle from him. And it was not easy for her there were many hurdles, many hurdles. It's not that she simply approached him, Jesus immediately healed her. There were many things that happened before her approach and her receiving the miracle from Jesus Christ. Now, I would like to see this even in a particular perspective. That is, how should our faith be? Now, this woman manifests her faith in different dimensions. Now, as we see these different dimensions, we also learn from her on how to manifest our faith in Jesus Christ. So, as we go through the whole passage, have this in mind. What do I learn in order to manifest my faith in Jesus Christ? To say a few words about the background of this event is this. <clears throat> this is the only time Jesus went out of the Jewish territory. We all know that he came as the savior of the whole world and Yet he lived within the Jewish territory. He was born in Bethlehem and, and he went to Egypt and came out when he was a little baby. But he did all his ministries in and around Jerusalem and most of his time was spent in Capernaum, the northern part of the Jewish territory. So, Jesus always traveled within the Jewish territory. This is the only event that clearly tells us that Jesus went outside, outside the Jewish territory and performed a miracle to a non-Jewish person. Of course, he performed miracles to the people who are not Jews. For example, the centurion's son, and daughter or son and a servant. So we know that Jesus was not biased. After all, he is the savior of the whole world. But this is the only event in which we see Jesus Christ going outside the Jewish territory and performing a miracle. <clears throat> now, if you look at the events that took place, before he goes out of the Jewish territory, 
we come to know something terrible happened that was john the baptist was beheaded and that news comes to jesus christ and the disciples hear it probably when they heard the death of the forerunner a person or a prophet who prepared the way for jesus christ got killed probably jesus was upset because he was a close relative we all know that john the baptist was a close relative of jesus christ so the death of john the baptist really upset him and the disciples probably they were gripped with fear so in order to take a rest in order to take the disciples away from the scene jesus takes them to the territory outside jewish territory sire and sidon or in the northern side of the jewish territory and they were gentile uh, nations and non jewish people lived there and especially when we combine the description of the woman in st mark and st matthew we come to know that she was a canaanite woman it's more like saying she was a philistine a canaanite woman the people who lived before israelites entered into canaan so we can say they were the local people or the native people of that region and mark says she was a greek speaking woman her language was different she was not speaking hebrew or aramaic the language of the israelites she was speaking greek probably she was from greece then mark also says she was a syro phoenician woman so saint mark was very clear about the race in which she belonged and then of course mark clearly says that she was a gentile a non jewish greek speaking and the race is syro phoenicia now this woman heard about jesus christ and approaches him and she shouted at jesus christ lord son of david have mercy on me she shouted at him and asked him and pleaded with him to heal her daughter now this word comes out in matthew chapter 15 where we read she called out to jesus as the son of david now the first step that we see here is that our faith develops when we hold on to the truth and confess our truth we call it confessional faith confessional faith there are two dimensions of faith one is confessional another one relational what do i mean by that <clears throat> confessional means there will be certain statements you say it and you believe in it for example we have the nicene creed and apostles creed we say it i believe in one god okay father almighty and so many things so we be certain with such things we believe about god the father god the son jesus christ about the holy spirit and about the believing community so we have statements and we confess it and say we believe in it so this is confessional statement you believe in certain statements religious statements doctrinal statements at the same time there is another dimension for faith that is relational and confessional faith is more prevalent in the greek community whereas relational faith is more we find in the jewish community what do we mean by relational faith the old testament 
one person relates to the other person by way of trusting the other person holding on to the other person relating to another person let me give you an example <clears throat> in tamil congregation i used to give this example <clears throat> we have the word in tamil for faith that's fine vishwasam awesome. awesome. check now this word vishwasam awesome. let me check this check okay now this word vishwasam awesome. is also used for one particular animal <clears throat> do you know that yeah dog akka correctly said it we always use the word vishwasam with relation to dogs vishwasamana nai <clears throat> that doesn't mean the dog is making a confessional statement i believe in my master he feeds me every day it doesn't confess its faith it always relates to the master it knows for sure the master will take care of it protect it and feed it now the dog's faithfulness is showed in its action in its action in the same way when we trust god when we relate to god we have to show that in our action in our action let me give an example <clears throat> once a very fat obese missionary went to kerala it seems <clears throat> he was invited to speak in different places and they took him to a village <clears throat> and after going in a car for a certain distance they had to get down and walked down towards the village as they were going towards the village there was a stream and water was flowing in it and there was a wooden plank now everybody was walking on the wooden plank and going to the other side but this fat missionary when he came near the plank the wooden plank he was hesitant and he said i don't know whether this wooden plank will hold my weight and the people said no 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 it's very strong it has been there for many many years and the fat missionary said that's why i am little worried about it has been here for many years you say and it will become very old uh, then the people said no no don't worry uh i we will uh, prove it <clears throat> so the two of indians stood on the wooden plank and jumped on it and said see this is very strong you can walk across the stream walking over the wooden plank even then he was not very sure then after some time he believed them and started walking on the wooden plank slowly and he came to the other side then as he was sharing the sermon he narrated this event and said in my personal experience i would like to share with you that i have learned a message by crossing over this wooden plank now you just notice my strength was not strong i had doubts but the wooden plank was so strong even though i had little doubt even though i had little faith i was able to walk over it and come to the other side then he said be careful on whom you trust which god 
you are going to trust yes your faith could be little but when you trust a one true god you will be able to lead a godly life so hebrews always believe in relational faith trust in one true god don't trust in other gods so here we see the uh, greek woman believed in jesus christ who was the real messiah her faith was both relational as well as confessional it is confessional because she approached jesus christ by saying you are the son of god you are the messiah you are the promised king at the same time she held on to him so our relation our faith also should be confessional as well as relational you should have continuous relationship with god in order to have a strong faith then we see that woman also manifested her faith in a courageous way in a persistent way in other words her faith was so strong even though she faced many hurdles she held on to the faith she approached jesus christ with a faith we all know that even though she was not a jewish woman even though she did not worship yahweh even though she belonged to another religious community another race she approached jesus christ now she had to face many hurdles sometimes even on an on our life we face many hurdles sometimes god allows certain hurdles why many christians even ask this question i believe in jesus why this is happening to me why i had to face this difficulties dear brothers and sisters in christ i tell you sometimes god allows sometimes god allows certain hurdles so that our faith could be strengthened we will come close to god hold on to him and have a strong faith now what are the hurdles <clears throat> if you look at the events it's uh, really sad that she had to face all these hurdles the first hurdle is that when she approached jesus christ jesus did not say anything now i am comparing what we have in matthews as well as in mark matthew clearly says when that woman approached jesus christ jesus simply walked away no word jesus was silent even many time when we pray we don't get immediate answer and why many time we wonder why god is keeping silence he is now why he is not answering my prayers yes sometimes god is silent he is testing us he is testing us and jesus was silently walking away but she had a strong faith she was not discouraged she started wa- walking behind jesus christ she started following jesus christ and the disciples and she continuously pleaded with him oh son of david help me heal my daughter she is possessed by an evil spirit she continued to walk behind jesus christ now what happens matthew says that the disciples asked jesus christ ask her tell us something ask her to go off when i read this i felt first thought jesus was keeping silent so the disciples were rep- recommending her case to jesus christ but that is not right because after that many things happen a conversation takes place there we see the disciples were not in favor of the woman they were simply asking the asking jesus christ to send her away tell her she you want that you won't do the miracle to her 
tell her that you came only for the Jewish community. And Jesus knew what they were thinking. So Jesus stopped and looked at her. Immediately, she came to the front. She was following them. Now she comes to the front and kneels before Jesus. Now Jesus cannot proceed. He cannot simply walk because she is there in front. And she knelt before Jesus. And Jesus said, I can't, I came for the Jewish community. Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. So Jesus puts a stumbling block. Jesus was testing her. He was not only simply testing her, he wanted to teach a lesson to the disciples. These disciples were Jews. They were also thinking that God is only for them. The savior of the world is only for them. So Jesus was simply reflecting the thoughts of the disciples. That was not Jesus' own words or own understanding because he came to save the whole world. He came to save that Canaanite woman too. So he simply said what the disciples had thought. Now, let's see what she says. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumb. Or Matthew says, the little puppies. In Matthew, he uses the word puppies. Even the puppies will eat the little bit of crumbs that fall out of the table. And she humbled herself. Her faith was very strong, a persistent faith. Then we see her faith manifesting in her humility. She humbled herself before Jesus Christ. When Jesus reflected the thoughts of the Jewish community or the disciples, comparing her with the dog, she accepted him. Yes, Lord, I'm like a little dog. I'm like a little puppy. Yes, sometimes bits and pieces fall out of the table from the children's table and the puppies will eat them in the same way. Why don't you help me? Why don't you he give me this little miracle so that my daughter would be saved? Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, look at her faith. She had a confessional faith and a relational faith. Secondly, we see her faith courageous one, a strong one, a persistent one. Then we see her faith with humility. When you humble yourself in the presence of God, God will lift you high. Wherever we, whenever we humble ourselves, we know God is there to lift us high. And that's what we see in the life of the Canaanite woman. Of course, she had manifested her motherly love. Definitely. That's why Jesus appreciated her and healed her daughters and uh, relieved, uh, released her from the evil spirit and she became well. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let's have this strong faith in us too so that we can also receive God's blessing. We can also experience God's wonder-working power in our personal life. Just keep a moment of silence. Loving God, we thank you for enabling us to meditate on this beautiful passage. Yes, Lord, help us to manifest 
the strong faith of the Canaanite woman. She believed that you are the Messiah. Help us to have this confessional faith and hold on to what we believe. Lord, help us to have this relational faith. Help us to relate to you always. Trust you every day for everything. Oh Lord, help us to have this persistent faith. Not just ask once and leave the matter. Lord, help us to ask you continuously till we get an answer, yes or no, from you, O oh Lord. Lord, when we ask according to your will, we know that we will get it. So that help us to pray continuously. Help us to believe in you and pray. Help us also to humble ourselves, O oh Lord. Yes, Master. Help us to cast out all kinds of self-righteousness from our lives. Help us to humble ourselves like the tax collector. Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Yes, Lord. When we humble ourselves in your sight, we know that you will definitely lift us high. Yes, Lord, we all are called to believe in you and have faith in you. Help us to have this kind of wonderful faith so that we could have a blessed life from your loving hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.